Today I am working on this 2016 Dodge Charger. Uh, it clearly has a Hemi motor in it. The customer called me, asked me if I could take a look at uh, the engine noise that it's making. He was told and is under the impression that it has a lifter tick noise type of situation. So I told him yes, I'll take a look at it. I've got plenty of experience with that. Um, shouldn't be a problem. So then he drops it off, I go to start it to pull it in, and just gut feeling, and right off the bat it starts to make noise, just gut feeling and sort of experience or what I've heard in the past, it doesn't sound like a lifter. It, to me it sounds like a rod knock. My friend that was here also heard me pull it in and he called it a lifter, and so we have the customer's calling the lifter which for him it's probably because it's what he was told you've got my friend that's telling me he thinks it's lifter and then i'm believing or thinking it's sounding like a rod knock but it's one that it's not a constant rod knock it's it's very continuous but every so often it kind of goes away and so the important thing for me is to try to attempt to isolate noise from either bottom or top because as you know that could determine you know which way a repair can go so I'll get set up for that and also get you uh, get you a shot of what that sounds like okay so this will be a cold start this is uh, in the morning I let it sit overnight hopefully camera will capture the noise and also hopefully it'll do the uh, kind of the come and go that I was uh, explaining and also simultaneously because it's the first cold start I am already set up with the scope and I'll show you my connections late uh, after I get the shot of it running So that's what it sounds like. Um, hopefully we got a good capture of that. Uh, I've got a microphone on both cylinder heads, hoping to capture it enough if it is lifter. And then I've got a third one down on the block, which I might get a shot of that later. It's actually on the driver's side on one of the uh, empty mounting points on the block. And this is a capture of a cold start. And to break it down, to make it easier or to help understand, blue channel I've got down on the block, red I've got on the driver's side, green on the passenger side. Obviously it looks like a bunch of noise, uh, oddly enough we're trying to capture noise. Um, blue seems to look more prominent, but let's uh, get you a shot of it in detail so if you look at that you can see that the red then it with all these that I do as far as scoping engine noises or scoping noises in general uh, the main thing to look at is amplitude the amplitude is going to be the size of the capture the signal captured and which will correlate to higher noise. The these spots, we'll call them, these ampl higher amplitude spots, are when noise is occurring, and you can see that it's happening in all three channels, which would make sense. It, the noise is going to reverberate and vibrate throughout the whole casting of the motor. We're watching for where it's loudest or highest amplitude that'll correlate to closer of a origin of where the noise is coming from and obviously you'll have your 
points in time where the noise, whether lifter or rod knock, isn't happening. Right off the bat, red channel amplitude is small. Green one's a little bit smaller, but the blue one reverberates a whole lot bigger or higher. And maybe we'll get in here a little bit more for you to see in detail. This also shows the strength, it's more of a solid portion there. And then obviously in the uh, amplitude, the up and down uh, portion of it also is a sign of strength. If you can see how the red is just small portion there, the green again. The blue has that hard initial thick and high uh, noise and then reverberates uh, also in a little bit higher scale than the other two. So the noise is happening, looks like origin-wise, on the blue channel. It's reverberating, being captured clearly on the uh, cylinder heads. But if it was lifter noise, I'd assume you'd capture it or hear it more prominent up top. As opposed to very, very strong from what looks to be a rod knock. And here in this portion, I believe is where, I think it starting here is where I gave it a little bit of gas to increase RPMs. And I don't know if you captured it on video, but you can see this portion here looks like I would call it a gap. And then another portion here to where, like I was explaining, the noise comes and goes, sort of. Here's another portion. So we're also capturing that we'll go here and as you can tell again strong 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 went away there's a little tiny blip there not as much even at these points so this is kind of even more let's call it a better stronger clue where almost to no capture let's call it here and down at the bottom even though it kind of goes away to our ear, there is still some sort of event there, and that's in the lower portion. So even though it probably didn't knock as loud, or if any at all, it still created some noise, and it's really captured down on the bottom, and not nothing any on top. And so again, continuing to, let's call another gapped portion, um, they're capturing smaller amounts compared to the bigger ones, but barely any up top. And there, there's a long portion of almost no noise. Um, but there, that blip there compared to there. There's some there, there, looks like there, but, and then back to strong knock. So I think with what I'm seeing right there, is enough to call it that the origin, the loudest place of origin for a noise that we're hearing is going to be down low. Which looks like, unfortunately, um, what the gentleman was told about possible lifter noise is untrue. So, I will have to give him the news, but at this point, I can pretty much, without doing anything crazy, identify and accurately with, we'll call it evidence, hardcore evidence, know where this repair is going to go. I would stand behind this because of the information that I captured. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it for this one. There's not much more that I can do. Uh, there's clearly a noise that's going on, um, but my thing, as I mentioned before, was to attempt to isolate and determine where it's coming from. The way that I'd like to do these is clearly by using the scope in the way that I just presented. Uh, it's just w one method that I've been using for a while and it just helps you be more accurate and it gives you more of a, a confidence level when you're approaching these type of situations. Again, it's just almost clear as day because all you have to do is when you're capturing, you're wanting to watch the source 
it generates the higher amplitude and it's not limited to you know engines you can use it on drive lines and suspension and and so on and so forth whatever your your imagination can imagine other than that I will just get with the customer let him know what he's going to need in order to repair this and that's pretty much it uh, I hope you enjoyed it just kind of a quick tip type of uh, video that I wanted to present and get that out here for you guys to uh, to learn and I hope you enjoyed it so thank you for watching as always and that's it for this one